The other side of that conversation is a bit more concerning. As the Chinese defense minister says the Taiwan issue is a red line that cannot be crossed. Are you disappointed to hear that kind of language following the meeting between President Biden and President Xi? I'm not, because that's the Chinese view. It has been their view ever since um, Taiwan's been an issue. It is to the Chinese. Taiwan is existential. It's non-negotiable. It's a red line. It's, it's, that's just where they are. Um, mm -hmm. And the real key here is for both sides not to uh, uh, trip the wire that's going to cause some kind of military action one way or the other. And that's the big issue here. Uh, General Austin made that point. The, the Chinese general made that point. That is, you hey, attack, saying you on the other side, you're, you're causing problems. Well, each side thinks that. Mm -hmm. so it's, and each that's side right. knows that. So therefore, <laughs> it's up to each side to... You know, let cooler heads prevail. Let's not do something that's kind of stupid. Secretary Austin is in Cambodia for this meeting uh, with his counterpart aimed at what we are uh, hearing is described as stabilizing our relationship. How would you describe our relationship right now? I think it's much better. Um, we were in a near free fall. It really began, well, it's been going for a long, some time, then accelerated in Anchorage uh, when, our, when uh, Tony Blinken on one hand and and Yang De on the other uh, just mm -hmm. virtually attacked each other, and it's been bad ever since. But um, I think both countries realize that um, they need each other. We need China, China needs us. And uh, President Xi Jinping wants to stabilize the relationship, and certainly we, America, want to maintain our national security. But I think that the um, the Bali meeting between uh, uh, President Xi and, and, uh, and President Biden really kind of set the floor, at least I hope so. There have been a lot of meetings mm -hmm. on the sides of that, not just Xi and Biden, but also Vice President Harris met with the Xi and the Austin meeting with his counterpart. China's agreed yeah. to uh, restart uh, climate talks. So there are lots of indications that things are starting to get a little better. Uh, the relationship's starting to warm up a little bit, but obviously there are huge issues ahead. The main point is I think that we're maybe on the cusp of a new situation where both countries are starting to be more mature in managing the relationship, be more honest in, in, about it, recognizing that neither country is going away. We're both going to be here, so let's kind of figure out a way to deal with this. Well, that's right. And look, President Biden continues to say that the one China policy remains intact, that nothing has changed. The Secretary of State has made that clear. But, but Joe Biden, as an individual, uh, whether he's abroad or here at home, continues to talk like it is changing. How would you advise the administration uh, to conduct itself in a more mature way, to your point, how, how should we be messaging that? Well, make sure that we are adhering to the One China policy, not only in words, but also in deed. And um, I think there's an opportunity here. Um, the Senate um, uh, Formulations Committee passed a bill out called the Taiwan Policy Act, which really um, digs at China even more with respect to Taiwan. And I think the administration thinks that bill goes too far. If the administration can um, indicate that uh, maybe that bill should be amended or not passed, that will send a very strong signal uh, to both Taiwan and, all, and to the United States and to China that, hey, maybe we're, we're, we're going we're to make sure whatever we do, it's not going to mm -hmm. be something that's going to be unnecessarily upsetting. Well, Speaker Pelosi has certainly upset some people. That, that was a <laughs> seismic moment when she touched down in Taiwan. Was, that was the Speaker was. of the House, though. There are a lot of other Codells that, that head over there. Kevin McCarthy, the incoming Republican Speaker, uh, has said for months that he plans to bring a bipartisan delegation to Taiwan. If these visits continue, what does that do to the relationship? Does that increase the temperature? Well, Speaker Pelosi's visit is special because, after all, she's the Speaker. She's next yeah. in line... Of, in the presidency. That's much different than other visits. Um, and also, she's very strident about it, and that was uh, upset the Chinese. Whether um, uh -huh. maybe McCarthy will be speaker, we'll see. But if he, I, if he goes, it'll cause some of the same problems. I doubt that Speaker McCarthy's going to go to Taiwan very quickly. He may take his time about this. You don't think that would help, it sounds like. Uh, well, no, no. If, if McCarthy went, that just makes it worse. Frankly, the administration urged Speaker Pelosi not to go. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm told, uh, frankly, that Taiwan President Tsai Ing-wen also uh, urged Speaker Pelosi not to go, but she wanted wow. to go. Um, and uh, frankly, um, um, Kevin McCarthy is a little bit different uh, than, than, the, than, than Pelosi. Um, uh, he's <laughs> she she's more of a cause person. She wanted to do it. Yes, right. McCarthy is a little bit more of a 
politician, he's going to consider all the different ramifications. And her language, to your point, was strident. But that's a bit of news, Ambassador. The administration has said that it did not tell Nancy Pelosi or ask Nancy Pelosi not to go. And we've certainly not heard that from Taipei. They rolled out the red carpet for her. Well, once she arrived, once Speaker arrived, you have to roll out the red carpet. But yeah. uh, I'm told by well-placed people who I think know and I trust that the President Tsai Ing-wen preferred that she not come because Tsai, President Tsai Ing-wen knows this, the Pelosi visit just really <laughs> stirs things up, <laughs> probably not in, in a good way. Yeah, well, that's some fascinating inside information. Ambassador, COVID restrictions are a big part of the story, of course, right now in China, as you well know. And we're seeing a huge source, uh, a surge, I should say, in cases here. Health officials say they are sticking with their COVID zero policy, which is now affecting about a fifth of the Chinese economy. That, of course, has reverberations around the world and certainly here in the U.S. When will China join the United States in essentially moving beyond COVID? It's a big issue for uh, President Xi Jinping. Um, he's, you know, he's made his bed with zero COVID policy, and he's kind of stuck with it. It's going to be mm. difficult to save face and yet up, uh, to change the COVID policy. But it's, it's causing it working, untold... It's caused untold economic harm to not only China, but to most parts of the world. They, yeah. I, my understanding is they've tried to relax it, but unfortunately, there are a lot more COVID cases now, which makes that relaxation much more difficult. But they're trying to relax it. So what do they need? Do we need a partnership on vaccines? Is that something the U.S. could do? Well, this is really weird. I'm a real outlier here. When, when, the, when COVID developed in China, first, we first learned about it, I thought, gee, the United States should... Should send some vaccine over, join with China, and say, hmm. we'll work with you. Um, President Trump ought to do that. But no, 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 the administration was too hawkish, didn't want to do that. We can help with vaccines. Um, there are some European vaccines that China is not accepting for foreigners. Yeah. Um, yeah. We also need, they need vaccines, especially for their, their senior citizens. Um, but uh, I think most of the seniors above 60 years of age have not been vaccinated or maybe just one shot. They need to develop a, a very good vaccine that, that works. And um, once they get that in place, then they can start to open up more easily. But that, they're, those, they're a little proud. They're too proud. They should open up more and take more foreign vaccines. And, but but the, mm. remember, it's a huge country. You know, 1.4 yeah. billion people in yeah. China. That's a, that's a big well, order. <clears throat> you just said a lot in that statement. Ambassador, while you're here, I have to ask you about what's happening on Capitol Hill as we come off the <laughs> midterm elections now, a Democratic Senate and a Republican House. You've served uh, in a Democratic-led Senate uh, with a Republican House, and I wonder what you think, if anything, will get done in the next two years, in this next session, or is the store closed? You know, I'm a... Um, of a view that goes against the tide. Uh, when I was in Congress, um, I, I felt that generally more was done when there was divided government, because then you have to compromise if you want to get something done. When mm -hmm. the same party is in power, White House and both bodies, then the, the other party is very upset it's, and, it, and throws uh, wrenches in the gears and stops things considerably. Right now, I think clearly um, it's very political. Uh, we're entering 2024 presidential year. Um, um, and the Republicans in the Senate are going to uh, hold lots of investigations, trying to embarrass uh, Democrats. That's going to happen. Yeah. It just gets a given. Um, also, with all the presidential candidates running, um, they'll be pretty hawkish on China. it will force uh, the Congress to also be somewhat hawkish on China. A China policy is such essentially determined by domestic politics. In, in, in the United States today, whether House, Senate, Republican, or Democrat, you've got to be really hawkish on China if you want to get reelected. That's just the, that's the way it is. It's unfortunate. I think we're too hawkish, but nobody dares raise his head or her head and say something even constructive if you're if having his or her head chopped off. So it's 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 a, it, China's <laughs> going to loom large as, as well.